So cash discounts. So these are amounts that the seller permits you to deduct from the invoice price for prompt payment. So in other words, uh, sometimes usually when you have like larger kind of transactions or the volume of transactions, then there might be these cash discounts and that's a cash management strategy. They're usually very small discounts because if you buy something on account and you have to pay them within 30 days, if they can get you to pay them a little bit earlier, it might be worthwhile to give you a discount to pay them within 10 days or something like that. So you have that discount coming up. So the income tax for income tax purposes, you can use either the following two methods to account for cash discounts. Number one, deduct the cash discount from purchase. See line 36 purchases, see uh, less cost of items withdrawn, personal use in chapter six, cost of goods sold calculation. Two, credit the cash discount to a discount income account. So in other words, you know, when you're, if, if you're uh, going to take the discount, you've got to determine, are you going to, are you, you know, locked into taking the discount or are you going to record it n without the discount a discount and then account for the fact that you then got the discount when the discount is, is coming into play. So for example, let's imagine you're buying inventory and when you buy the inventory, you have the option of possibly having a discount. If you pay within 10 days, they give you this, this discount, which is usually a pretty uh, low discount in order to incentivize you to pay early. So you could say, hey, look, I think when I buy the inventory, I'm going to take into consideration that discount. So I'm going to account for it at that point in time when I buy the inventory, putting the inventory on the books at the, the lower price uh, with the discount. Or you could put, put it on the books at the higher price that that uh, does not include the discount and then if you do pay them within 10 days you're like oh I, i'm able to pay them earlier within the discount period well now you've got this discount which you could uh, credit the cash discount to a discount income account so those are kind of the methods that that could you could use you must use the chosen method every year for all of your purchase discounts so once again they want consistency with the method like normal uh, if you use the second method, the credit balance in the account at the end of your tax year in business income. Under this method, you do not reduce the cost of goods sold by the cash discount you received because you're putting it in income instead of basically uh, reducing the cost of goods sold account. Notice it's the same net effect in essence because it's income statement is income minus expenses. Are you going to be adjusting the cost of goods sold or are you going to be recording it? as an increase in income, decreased cost of goods sold or increase in income. When valuing your closing inventory, you cannot reduce the invoice price of merchandise on hand at the close of the tax year by the average or estimated discount received on the merchandise. Trade discounts. So these are reductions uh, from list or catalog prices and are usually not written into the invoice or charged to the customer. So do you enter these discounts on your books of account instead? I'm sorry, do not enter these discounts on your books of account. Instead, use only the net amount as the cost of the merchandise purchased. For more information there, you can see trade discounts in chapter six, payment placed in escrow. So if the buyer of your property places part or all of the purchase price in escrow, you do not include any part of it in gross sales until you actually constructively receive it. So you might be familiar with an escrow kind of situation with real estate uh, type of transactions. You can have a similar concept basically with other transactions. The escrow is kind of that intermediary period where the deal is not completely finalized. You've, have, you've got the third party that is is holding on to the holding on to the assets in that case so there you haven't really claimed them at that point in time because they haven't cleared through escrow you haven't finalized the transaction yet so you would think that it wouldn't be so then the question is if it's income to you on this transaction you would think that you wouldn't have to record the income until it it's out of escrow because that's when you would actually have claim to it However, upon completion of the terms of the contract and the escrow agreement, you will have taxable income even if you do not accept the money until the next year. So after the escrow is completed, even if you say, don't give me the money, right? Because I don't want to record it this year. I want to record it next year. Well, you can't do that because now you have constructive receipt to it as we talked about in the income recognition. That would be like saying someone wants to pay you and you tell them, 
no, don't pay me until next year. Well, you have complete ability to get the money now. Uh, so, so you can't really, you can't just say, well, I just don't want you to give me the money. You already have constructive receipt of the money after it's done with the escrow. So that would be income, you would think. 